And we're going to be talking about the multiverse is ruining comic book movies. We have an article right here that we're going to pop up on the screen in just a second. But this is something that we really wanted to talk about. John presented it to me because uh, Screen Rant had posted it on Instagram. And I kind of agreed. And we both kind of rambled a little bit while we were at work. And it's time for us to share our opinions on why the multiverse is ruining comic book movies. Mm -hmm. So your thoughts so far? Uh, so I kind of agree with it. Um, we haven't read the article like fully yet. We just kind of saw again, it was on Instagram. So all it was was really like their, uh, the header for the, for the article. And then, you know, a caption, a small caption that they put, which is pretty agreeable. Um, I kind of agree in the sense that like, it's, it's becoming more of a cameo fest than an actual like multiversal story. Because I feel like the only time we've seen good multiversal stories lately, kind of, was in the CW Flash. Kind of. Mm -hmm. It was more, they, they, they dealt with more like timelines and different Earths. But um, as far as like the, the multiverse, um, it's really just been like a large cameo fest. Uh, like Ezra Miller's Flash is, you know, a good example uh multiverse of madness is a good example um and also mm -hmm. i would i would say this yeah the spider verse the spider verse movies are um a good cameo for us. actually the first one i say is probably the best example for a multiverse movie yeah um but the i mean even spider-man no way home too that yeah that's true as well it was just a cameo fest and they also dealt with the uh same person but looks different thing that you know they mentioned in the flash it doesn't always hold up well like I, like the cameos are not what makes the movie like i feel like a lot of the times when they feel like their movie is gonna flop they want to add these cameos to just to draw people in like i can guarantee you majority of the people that went to go see flash only went to see michael keaton yeah and that's pretty much it and kind of zod for what he was hyped up to be in the trailers yeah. even though he was I mean, hey, non-existent zod zod was pretty worth it he was ruth he, i feel like he was more ruthless in that universe than in the main universe yeah but for five minutes of screen time it yeah, wasn't worth but, him coming back no 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 um i, I mean uh keaton's batman was i guess worth the watch i mean they i feel like I feel like they could have just did a, th a third Batman with Keaton and like that would have been it. Like, I feel yeah. like the flash movie was just unnecessary to bring him back, but like, yeah. I mean, they did him justice though, in my opinion. Oh yeah. The fighting, off. the fighting and everything. And also his acting was really good in the movie as well. But when you were talking about, um, the multiverse, it's not the cameos aren't what bring it in. Uh, and it's true. I just think a lot of people when, you know, Marvel fans or just comic book fans in general saw No Way Home, we were blinded kind of by it because we were like, holy cow. Like when Spider-Man No Way Home came out and did what they did, they did something that we all dreamed about. Mm -hmm. You know, this was something we dreamed about and they brought our dream to life. And what they did wrong from this point forward was kind of set the bar they set the bar so high that we're expecting this is what multiverse movies are going to be like for now on you know with uh multiverse of madness um we were expecting it to be 10 times better because it's called the multiverse of madness right yeah we only seen them jump through like we only actually seen them in like three or four universes and they weren't even one they weren't there for that long and two one of them was just a major cameo fest and it's like it, was it, it didn't really help i mean not i wouldn't say major cameo fest i mean the only two two or three people that they had were like a big cameo mm -hmm. was john krasinski's uh reed richards uh professor, professor x. x and then um black bolt from the failed inhumans series yeah. um I thought that it was still a good movie because the story behind it, when you get mm -hmm. past all the cameo stuff, is just, you know, Doctor Strange kind of showing us how the multiverse works yeah. and kind of like what uh, Michael Keaton's Batman basically did. He explained DC's uh, way of how multiverse logic kind of works with the spaghetti and stuff like yeah. that. And that's, oh, go ahead. 
I don't know. I was gonna say another good example was Loki. I feel like Loki really tackled the multiverse perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely was something that uh, is the reason why Loki is such a top tier Disney Plus show for Marvel is because one, it deals with the main storyline. Um, two, uh, it it does exactly like what you were talking about. It explained the multiverse very very well, and I feel yeah. like that should be what these shows are about um and movies as well i think what people are expecting now is everything to just be a cameo fest and that's what we're just expecting at this point because now deadpool 3 don't get me wrong deadpool 3 movies are good but well who do they pull back from the grave hugh jackman's wolverine yeah so it's just going to be another cameo fest and I'm, i won't be surprised if we see um a bunch of other x-men cameos from the previous movies and such like that I feel like with Deadpool, though, it kind of works. That's just his character. Yeah. He's just always referencing. Uh, pretty much all his references are cameos, pretty much. Mm. He's like he's kind of like Family Guy of like Marvel, where they just cameo they just after say, cameo, yeah. jokes after jokes, about like anything. Like the Simpsons and shit. They'll like actually yeah. pull real public figures and stuff like that yeah. and have them in their show. And, you know... It's kind of good that you brought that up because that's where it makes sense at, you yeah. know, it's makes sense for stuff like that or like for Loki, which the premise of it was to kind of explain the multiverse and stuff like that. So when Loki season one came out, it basically kind of segued us into the multiverse saga a little bit more mm -hmm. and then give us a better understanding. You know, obviously, previously we had. um Did Loki come out before Spider-Man No Way Home? Yes. Yeah, it came out, but they came out the same year, but Loki was in the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, because No Way Home came out in December. Yeah, yeah. So, stuff like that. I feel like they started the multiverse saga for Marvel great, but then they kept giving us something that just feels a little redundant, which is the cameos. Mm -hmm. And I think Screen Rant has a little bit more to say. It says, admit it, the multiverse is ruining comic book movies. In recent years, the multiverse has been a concept used in many superhero franchises to expand their story. But this comes with some major issues. I'm pretty sure they're going to reiterate the same issues, we think. Yeah. Uh, the multiverse be first became a prominent concept in superhero fictions in 1961's The Flash of Two Worlds, featured in DC's comic... The Flash, issue 123, which saw Barry Allen travel to another universe and meet the original Flash, Jay Garrick, which we saw in The Flash. Yeah. Another, another cameo. This was a groundbreaking storyline, paving the way for the multiverse to be used in an innumerable number of stories in the following years. Marvel Comics followed suit in 1971's Avengers, issue 85, which introduced the multiversal Squadron Supreme. When these stories began to be adapted into feature films, audiences didn't have to wait long until the multiverse once again became a crucial plot point, but things may have now gone too far. They did. I honestly think they did go too far. And it's almost like you wish, you, you kind of wish No Way Home never happened a little bit because, like I said, it set that bar to a certain point where it's like that's all people are going to be expecting now it's 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 just what i don't like how it's being used though is where it's just being used to bring old actors back into roles instead of just creating new characters or you know hiring new actors to play these roles because imagine if they didn't hire um sir uh sir patrick stewart mm -hmm. back for you know professor x cameo and they hired someone else to then introduce the new professor x you know what i mean i feel like it would have worked out better that way i feel like they only brought him in literally just for a nostalgia factor yeah. of course money grab yeah like mm -hmm. like what they did with um john krasinski's reed richards it was a new face for reed richards they didn't pull um I can't remember his last name. Uh, like Johan Griffith. It was is it Ian or Johan? No, it's Yo Johan Griffith. Okay. Yeah, that guy from the from the 
the first two Fantastic Four movies, or they also didn't pull Miles Teller from the the shitty version of Fantastic Four, which you know I would hope they wouldn't. But yeah. but still, like the the matter the, the fact of the matter is, they didn't go and pull two older actors or you know two previous actors for that character to just cameo grab for this. Mm. Then again, John Krasinski was just used for uh, fan bait pretty much because you know he was a huge fan cast. And we don't know Death. if they'll cast him again, but we know that he was only cast just for fan bait. Yeah. Which kind of sucks because I would have liked him as Reed Richards. Yeah. Um, kind of to piggyback off of what you said, I think you had said earlier, the multiverse should have been used to expand the story, which they mm-hmm. kind of are, but they aren't at the same time. They're yeah. expanding the story because yes, you have to introduce other, um, other characters and other things, but they're not doing it because in order for you to even go watch the movie, they need to throw in a cameo or two, yeah. which I would have loved if, if they had did the multiverse saga, not even that, if they did multiverse madness and they introduced all new faces for all the characters and that set up for the next generation of Marvel for us to be like, oh, okay, so this person's going to be, uh, Fanta- Fan- Mr. Fantastic, this person's going to be Ghost Rider, this person's going to be this, this person's going to be that. So that way we're like, oh, we have an idea and it's already set up for us. So now we're more excited for the movies because we've already seen all the new actors. We've seen all the new faces of who are going to play these characters that we know and love, but they keep throwing in the cameo or two just for us to be like, yeah, I'll go see him or her one more time. Yeah. And the thing about like in comics, most of the time they do multiversal things. It's you can't really like cameo things, kind of you can, but like by art style, kind of. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even then, it's just it, the only time it makes sense is for like if that character's universe looks like that. But most of the time, the characters just look the same. Like if Barry met Barry, it would just look like the two same Barry. It's probably a slight different, like the colored eyes or colored hair or something like that. Right. Kind of like in um. And into the Spider Verse, how both Peter Parkers only look different by their their, uh, eye, their eye color and hair, yeah. yeah. Um, like subtle stuff like that, I feel like works better than just a cameo grab. Mm-hmm. Where it's like um, Andrew Garfield and mm-hmm. uh, Toby and Maguire Spider Man. Yeah. There is that theory going around where um, I was these two guys, and they always have like their little Marvel uh, action figures and stuff in front of their mics, and they yeah. had said. I'm pretty sure it was them. And they were like, if you look at all their Earths, their Earths are like a bunch of numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And if you look at those numbers, each uh, number like Earth 616 is super far from Earth, uh, whatever Andrew Garfield's on or whatever uh, Tobey Maguire's on. And they're like, the further the Earth is from your Earth, the more different that they would look. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a that's a that's that's actually a really good point in theory. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but... They, I feel like they're only saying that because of what they got. So mm-hmm. let's say if uh, No Way Home was rewritten and they didn't have Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire. Let's just say in like some weird other universe, say in our multiverse, right? And it was just two more Tom Hollands completely different. There was a mm-hmm. Venom Tom Holland and then there was uh, another Tom Holland, but he was portraying, uh, let's say, Spider-Punk. There was a Spider-Punk Tom Holland, right? Let's just say. And that was uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. They still followed the multiverse story, but that's all it was, was just two different Tom Hollands. Yeah. So if they had did that, then it would have been kind of more interesting to be like, okay, so it's just Tom Holland and just a different universe. And I guess he has a different story. But now they're throwing in these cameos because one, it's something that everybody dreamed about. Um, and two, it's the money grab thing. And I think that's what's going to mess up uh, future Marvel movies. Now a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by CPR Ninjas. If you live in the Central Florida area, then this is a place for you to get CPR certified. CPR Ninjas provides courses in accordance with the American Heart Association 2015 guidelines with AHA certified instructors. At CPR Ninjas, their passion is to provide you with knowledge and skills needed to perform high quality CPR with accuracy and precision. 
Javon and Lysandra Washington have been working in the healthcare industry since the mid-1990s and share 35 plus years combined in healthcare. Javon and Lysandra are both registered nurses with diverse backgrounds, which include home care, hospital care, acute care, wound care, hospice care, pediatrics, research, and higher learning education. Together, they share a passion to reach the community, provide education that will save lives, and improve quality of life. As American Health Association instructors, they also share the same vision with the AHA to building a healthier tomorrow. If you want to get started on a course today, go ahead and email Javon at CPRNinjas.com. Or if you want to call, it's 813-603-6898. Now back to our video. 